host, Nick Kelly. Hope you're having a good month, good day, good year, good something, because we got a good show today. Action-packed. Well, it's really not action, because this is audio, not video. But kick us in, drummers. Ahoy! Hoo-hoo! <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Nimble Urban Survivor. My name is Nick Catelli, the host with the a little bit of most. We got a good show today. Today's topic comes in from someone named Heather. Heather writes, hey, Nick, I'm a new small business owner, and I've been trying to do social media marketing. Oh, well, that's cute, but it's really expensive because influencers are kind of douchebags. Yes, I would agree with that. So I've been trying to think about doing the Tom's Shoes method of buy one, give one, but I don't think I have the money to do it. What do I do? That's a good topic there. Because the buy one, get one method, I think was like kind of started by Tom's, right? So if you guys don't know uh, who, who Tom or Tom Shoes is, Tom, I think was like a reality TV star, right? And so he started up his own shoe brand because I guess he like went overseas and he, and he saw that like kids, you know, didn't have like proper footwear, you know, and they were just like running around barefoot and, you know, <clears throat> getting like twigs and stuff stuck in their feet, which isn't good. Like you do need shoes, right? So he created Tom's shoes. I've never bought a pair of Tom's shoes before. Uh, it's just not my style. It's very like Lord of the Rings meets like uh, a state college version of Harry Potter. I don't know, just very elf-like to me, okay? But the whole philosophy is, is that if you buy a pair of Tom shoes, he gives a pair of like shoes to a kid, I think like a kid in like Africa or something like that, or you know, a, 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 a country where the kids like need shoes, okay? So <clears throat> it kind of makes sense. Like when you when you hear it, you know, and not knowing anything else, you're like, oh, well, that's kind of nice. Yeah, I'll buy a pair of these shoes so that this kid can also have a pair of these shoes. Now, I've never bought Tom's because I don't feel like donating a pair of shitty shoes to a kid. I mean, if anything, if it was like buy a pair of Air Jordans, give a pair of Air Jordans, then we're talking. Then I'm like, okay, well, maybe I'll buy that. But Tom's shoes, not my thing. But recently, in the past couple of years, it's gotten some backlash because about how it destroys the local economy for like these small towns. Because then everybody started doing it, right? Because it was like buy a pair of shoes in America, we give one to a kid, and then it was like clothing and then all sorts of stuff, right? So <clears throat> now all these like villages and cities and, you know, uh, you know, third world countries are getting all this free stuff. And then on a new scale, it's getting a lot of backlash because it's killing the local economy, right? And I think one of the things was is like a local shoe salesman or a cobbler, right? That's I think that's what they call international shoe people, cobblers, um, was like, I, I can't compete with free shoes, and it, and it put me out of business. So I guess that was the big issue is like Tom Shoes was putting like a small little independent shoe store out of business. I guess my analogy for that would be it's like if, if you owned a small business, right? Like if there's just like a street and it's like the old American street with small businesses and then a Walmart comes in, right? But then the Walmart just starts giving away shit for free. So like, let's say like you're a shirt store and you sell like really nice shirts and then Walmart just comes in and just starts giving shirts away for free left and right. And let's say like you're a candy shop, you know, you're selling candy. Walmart comes in, starts giving free candy away left and right. Well, what does that do? Well, it hurts your your business because no one's going to be buying shirts or candy from you because they're just getting it from for free from a big corporate giant who can afford to do it. So that is what was happening with Tom's shoes is the local merchants were like, please stop giving our kids free stuff because they need to buy it so we can have an economy. Um, I don't know what's going on today with Tom's shoes. I think they still do it. You know, I don't know. I know the other thing that, that those like the kids get for free in those countries is they always get like the loser team t-shirts from like Super Bowls and, and things like that. Like the team that lost during the Super Bowl, you know, they don't get like their hat or their t-shirt that says that they won because they lost. Well, they give all those away to like third world countries. They're like, here you go, kids. We could give you food, but here's a uh, loser Super Bowl hat and t-shirt. <clears throat> you know, I, I'm not going to lie. Like when the Cubs 
were in the 2016 World Series, which was was the most amazing World Series. Um, if they would have lost that, part of me probably would have traveled to Africa to see if I could track down one of those like, you know, World Series Cub shirts. You know, but obviously they won, and then I spent way, way too much money on on Cubs World Series stuff. But it was completely worth it. It was a good investment. Good investment. That stuff appreciates like art, pretty much. If you didn't know that, <clears throat> so our topic today is. How do you survive? Buy one, give one. That's what I'm going to, I don't know what the business term is. I'm just going to call it like you buy one, we give one, right? That's the term. So here's the problem, okay? Obviously, it hurts the local economy, okay? But it doesn't really help those like neighborhoods, okay? Like if you really think about it, like, yeah, you give them some free shoes, it doesn't really help, okay? And <clears throat> I know what you're thinking, you're like, well, what if we donated money? and gave them like free food, you know, like we donate it, like, you know, companies will do that, like a, a business will be like, oh, you buy a shirt and today like 5% of your sale will go to buying food for a third world country. Sounds really like, it sounds like a really, really good idea. But here's the problem with that. There's no details to that. Okay, that's why I never donate to those things. Like when I'm at the grocery store and they're like, would you like to donate a dollar to helping kids across America? No, I'm not going to donate a dollar because I don't know where that dollar is going so why would I donate to it right there's no details it's always like really generic and even the names of these charities are like super generic they're like hey would you like to help the uh, kids of the world being kids in a world charity no I wouldn't now <clears throat> if I was like checking out the grocery store and they're like hey would you like to donate one dollar to go towards a steak dinner for this kid named Melvin in Africa, here's a picture of him. Also, we have him on FaceTime confirming he's about to order the steak, but we got to get your dollar to it. And I can confirm that it's actually a live feed. Then, yeah, you know, I might donate like 50 cents or something like that for that because I know where the money is actually going. And that's the problem with a lot of these charities is we don't know where the money's going. We don't have a clue. And, and most of the time, like if you donate a dollar to a charity, like how much of that dollar actually goes to the person who needs it. I don't think a lot. And this is just my opinion. I don't even think like 50% of that dollar. I think literally, you know, the dollar gets torn apart by the nonprofit reinvesting in itself. And then the person who probably actually needs the money, they probably just get like 25 cents or something like that. <clears throat> okay, so that method doesn't work either. The whole like, do you want to donate a dollar thing, right? Because you just don't know where the money is going, okay? And then with the buy one, get one, kills the economy. So you're thinking, yeah, what if we did the food thing? Like, that makes sense, right? Like, we'll just buy food. You can't do that, okay? Because in a lot of these areas, which, you know, we're donating stuff to, they have warlords. And the warlords and the local militia just steal the food for themselves, okay? So therein lies the problem. They even steal, like, the shoes and the shirts, and they're wearing, like, the you know, old sports failure Super Bowl team things. So the warlords who control these like cities and neighborhoods in all of these countries, okay, because there are a lot of countries that have warlords that like, you know, control the real area, that control the neighborhood or the village, all right? I know a lot of people are like, well, that's a real thing. I've only seen that on like in the movies, dude. I didn't know that was real. Yeah, that's real, buddy. That's real. Like, There are people that live under the threat of warlords. So for today's show, how to survive, buy one, give one. Step one is find a country that has an evil warlord in one of the villages. Now, for legal reasons, I've been told I cannot name a country because obviously we don't want to get in trouble with the United Nations. Um, also, I can't, <clears throat> I, I can't use a real country as an example of its own thing. Okay. Okay, I, I'm told by my lawyer I'm not allowed to use a, a real country or a real village as an example because obviously we don't want to get sued or, or get in trouble and, you know, be on CNN tonight. Um, so we'll just make up a fake country, like, as our example. So step one is find a country that has, you know, the threat of warlords who take everything from them. That's step one. And then step two is you want to come up with marketing techniques that appeal to the American people to get rid of the warlords. Now, here's here's the rookie mistake. Here's the rookie mistake. Because I know a lot of you are thinking, well, why don't I just like do what America usually does when we have like a high-powered 
drug cartel or a warlord is we like train the villagers to fight back or we give them guns or we send in some American soldiers. It, it's a huge disaster. You know, it didn't work with Bay of Pigs. And it, it doesn't really work that well, you know, trying to overthrow these warlords. So <clears throat> we have to think outside the box, okay? Because the last thing you want to do is have your charity or your business, I mean, do their charity. And then, you know, it accounts for a lot of people dying because you gave them guns and there was a war in the village. And, you know, these poor villagers, they don't really know how to fight. You would have to, like, hire someone to go in there and train them. Complete disaster, okay? So <clears throat> we have to have an out-of-the-box method of how to get rid of these warlords, okay? And I think I have a few ideas that we're going to go through on step two. Step two is kind of a really, we're going to really, really dive into this, okay? And for an example, um, I guess since we can't use a real country, we'll just call it Nick's Land, right? And for the product, let's just say Nick's Land is the evil warlord country, and let's say the product is uh, Cha-Cha's Coffee, which I don't think is a real brand of coffee. I don't know. It might not be. Uh, so Cha-Cha's Coffee, if you buy it, we will use some of the proceeds to take down a dictator. I've thought of a commercial. Guys, can we, um, can we roll the music? Here's an example. Hey, everybody. My name's Nick of Cha-Cha's Coffee, a delicious cup of coffee. And if you come in today, for every one cup of coffee you buy, we'll donate a dollar to taking down the warlord who controls Nick's land. Not with guns or violence, but by sending those warlords a cup of our fresh coffee injected with estrogen and Prozac to calm them down a bit so maybe they'll chill out and stop stealing and killing and eventually just leave the whole territory so it democracy can pop up in Nick's land. Cha-Cha's Coffee. We take down warlords with the power of prescription medication. Yeah, you can, you can cut that. Okay. Does that make sense, everybody? Kind of what I did there. So we're not using guns and violence to get rid of the warlords. We're thinking outside the box, right? We're not overthrowing them. We're just using other methods to get them to leave. All right. So let me, let me give you another uh, example of another commercial you could try. Hey everybody, Nick here for Cha-Cha's Coffee. For a smooth, cool, fresh cup of coffee. Well, it happened again in Nick's land. An evil warlord came in and pillaged the village and took all of their fresh water. Well, I don't like that. So if you come in this week and you try one of our little tasty, uffy, puffy pastries, we'll use one dollar of every purchase towards sending that evil warlord in Nick's land a fake ticket that says he won a billion dollar prize in America, so that when he comes up to America to claim his prize, the CIA is right there at the border to arrest him and take him away for life at Guantanamo Bay. Cha-Cha's Coffee, tricking evil warlords into coming to America to get arrested since 2015. Okay, yeah, you can cut that. So does that make sense, guys? Because we're thinking outside of the box. Inside of the box is people want to do, like, violence and things like that. But, you know, outside of the box is we think of clever marketing ways to get rid of evil warlords. You know, I, I'm not going to lie. I don't know why the U.S. Army, like, if they just want to get, get, you know, get rid of a dictator, uh, why don't they just get a really, really good marketing PR team? to come up with a way to, 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 you know, not use violence to get rid of them. I mean, if anything, I find that just good old humiliation and mocking always works to make people leave. You know what I mean? All right, let's do, let's do one more commercial. Let's do one more commercial. Here we go. Hey, guys, cue the music. Hey everybody, Nick here again for Cha-Cha's Coffee, a spicy cup of coffee that gets you up in the morning. Well, if you donate this week, we'll donate a dollar to creating tons and tons of pamphlets to drop on the village an evil warlord terrorizes in Nickland. What would those pamphlets say? Well, it's going to say that that evil dictator who terrorizes them cried during the entire Friends reunion on HBO Max like a little baby. That should get rid of them because we're Cha-Cha's Coffee. We have uffy puffy delicious pastries, a good cup of coffee, and can humiliate warlords out of 
any village to save its people. Cha-cha! Okay, okay, cut the music. Um, and that's step two. Yeah, so think outside the box. Have fun with it. You know, your business, like, put up pictures of the evil warlord and the villagers and, and, and being able to, you know, show the proof that you're doing what you say you're going to do. Now, step three, easy step. Just go and find all the people that'll help you do this, you know, like a UN secretary or an ambassador, and they can kind of like give you the connections and hook up with the villagers to be able to, you know, have these marketing things carried out. Step three is pretty easy, right? You know, just find those people, probably just Google them, email them, whatever. <clears throat> and then step four is just market, 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 right? Just, just tell every customer, Show them a promotional video if you want. Have banners up in your small business. And it's as easy as that. So that's the one, two, three step process on how to survive the buy one. Give one that blows like Tom's shoes out of the water. Okay, now I know what you're thinking. That one, it's a little expensive, right? There's going to be a lot of money involved because I feel like, you know, step two, if you're not that creative, you'd have to go hire like a whole marketing team to come up with that. That could be pricey. And then step three, obviously, when you have to like go and hire like former ambassadors and, you know, U.S. relations and things like that, that probably gets kind of pricey too. And, you know, you got to pay off the villagers probably. Uh, to get this stuff done, to get rid of the warlords so people don't think that you're just a marketing liar. Okay, so <clears throat> that one, two, three step process, a little bit more expensive. Let's go towards the more cheaper domestic, um, I guess, example. Okay, and that would be, because obviously in America, we don't really have like evil warlords, or do we? I don't know, I'm not gonna get into them. But you could use your marketing to double check someone else's marketing, okay? Like you could piggyback off of it. So for example, let's use Tom's shoes. If Tom says, if you buy a pair of my shoes, we give a pair. Well, you could say, for every cup of coffee you buy at Cha-Cha's, we go out and hire a private investigator to confirm that Tom is actually giving these shoes away to the kids that need them. So, <clears throat> and that's kind of the cheaper aspect, right? So I guess step one is find another company or small business that does the buy one, give one, okay? And I'll give you an example of one because I saw a commercial the other day for a new gin, you know, gin, the alcohol, you know, ha, ah, can I get a gin and tonic with a twist of lime, baby? I don't know, gin to me, it just seems like such a prohibition alcohol. And so <clears throat> I saw they were doing this thing where they said that if you buy a bottle of our gin, we will donate proceeds of our sale to saving the whales in the Pacific Ocean. And that kind of made sense. I was like, oh, okay, well, that's kind of, I don't know what alcohol has to do with saving the whales. Like, I, I don't get that. But I guess, like, it really works. Because, you know, gin's not my favorite alcohol. I'm not a big fan of gin. But when you connect gin to something like saving the whales, then it's like you have to buy the gin, right? So they're using more of, like, a guilt method, okay? Because it's like, well, if you don't buy our gin, we can't save these whales, and the whales go extinct, and it's going to be your fault because you bought beer instead of our gin. I call this the guilt buy one, give one marketing method. See, our method before taking down the evil warlords, that's not guilt, that's action, okay? That's action, all right? This is guilt. I don't like the whole guilt marketing technique, you know, buy our gin, because if you don't, the whales will all blow up and die, which isn't true. Uh, I think we have a pretty good whale population going on right now. I actually, I have no clue. That's that's just my opinion. I don't, you know, I, I don't know. I was worried about tigers before, but then I saw like Joe Exotic on Netflix. And I was like, I think the tigers are doing okay. Maybe, kind of, I don't know. There seems to be a lot of them. Need to keep growing them. But I don't like that. I don't like when you pressure me into buying your product and then make me feel like if I didn't buy your product, that someone is going to die or an animal is going to ex go extinct or the world is going to end. I don't like that. Don't use guilt, okay? Not a big fan. So 
How do you compete with them? Well, you call them out on their bullshit, okay? And you use your marketing to call out their marketing, okay? And I'll give you an example of that. Guys, cue the music. Hey everybody, Nick here for Cha Cha's Coffee. Spicy coffee to wake you up in the morning. Well, we heard that there's a certain gin company trying to say that you should drink more alcohol than coffee because it's gonna save the whales. Well, guess what, guys? This week, if you buy a cup of Cha Cha's scalding hot, delicious cup of coffee, we'll donate a dollar to hiring a private investigator to go and scoop out this gin company to number one, make sure they're even real, and number two, make sure that they're actually saving the whales like they said in their market. Marketing. We'll also use a small portion of that dollar that we donate to hiring an attorney who, if, well, let's say that gin company doesn't save the whales, will sue the shit out of them so they go bankrupt so they can stop doing their marketing line. So come on in to Cha Cha's Coffee with our uppy duppy puppy delicious pastries and donating a dollar to hire a private investigator and a lawyer to make sure that that gin company, I won't name them, is actually saving the whales and not lying to you. Cha-chas. Okay, you can cut that. Cut it. Cut it. Thank you. All right, so you see what I did there? So that's kind of the other version of the buy one, get one, is you're not actually giving anything or donating anything. You're just calling out the other businesses who also make these promises and you're just saying that your marketing donation will make sure that their marketing donation is actually happening. Does that make sense? I feel like somebody might have went cross-eyed trying to like figure this out, right? All you're doing is that your donation is to make sure that these other companies are actually following through with their donations, right? Kind of the cheaper method because you just got to go and you know, hire a uh, private investigator, which I don't, I think you probably just get like a low tier one. You know, you don't have to get really like an expensive one. Um, And then you would just have to go and find, you know, a lawyer. And the good thing about lawyers in this sense is you could probably get them to do it for like pro bono. Because, you know, obviously these charities, you know, you got to make sure they're actually doing what they say that they are doing. And that's really, that's the two methods of of how to survive, buy one, give one, is number one, focus your marketing on taking down the evil warlord instead of giving stuff to the people, the villagers, and then having it just stolen from them by the warlord. And then I guess method two would just be is, yeah, just have your marketing go after other people's charity marketing. Call them out. Make sure that they're actually doing what they say that they're doing you know because at the end of the day when you donate you know to a charity or you do the whole grocery shopping you don't know where that money's going you don't know if it's actually getting to the person that really needs it because here's what happens someone creates a charity right because the whole charity's whole business model is we focus on helping some sort of group of people and we just raise money for them right it's as easy as that really in reality a charity you don't need like an office or anything you could do all of this just like online at home because that should be the goal of a charity right like you don't need like an office or staff or anything it's donate us money and then we give that money to people who actually need it or we use that money to buy things you know, to take down the warlords or to give the villagers fresh water. You know, like if I was going to start a charity today, like Nick Catelli's Fresh Water Charity is if you donate to my charity, uh, I will use that money to buy water filters and ship them to like, you know, countries that still have like filthy, dirty water. It's as easy as that. It's a two-step process. Give me money. I use the money. Happy. But it's not like that. When you really look at a charity, it's not like that, okay? Because number one, they're a nonprofit. And here's the loophole to a nonprofit is that they can continuously invest in themselves, right? Like, I know they're like, oh, well, they're a nonprofit. They can't make a profit. Yes, they still technically make a profit. They do, okay? Now, what did they do with that profit? They reinvested 
in themselves. I'll give an example. I won't use the name, but there was a charity a couple years ago, and they were doing like a fresh water thing, like give us money and then we'll help get fresh water to, you know, these kids in this foreign country. Makes sense, right? But there was no details to it. There was no like, we'll buy water filters or we'll, we'll, you know, give them bottles of water or we'll send someone in to help them like figure out how to clean their own, their own water. It, there was never any details. And that's the thing. A lot of charities don't give you the details because they're actually probably not doing what they say that they're going to do. So <clears throat> they said, give us the money. We'll do the water thing, right? So when they really looked into it, number one, the whole water thing was a whole scam, Okay, they were sending like maybe like one case of bottled water to a random village and then saying that that's the charity, which in reality it is like that's the loophole is like, yes, we will get them clean water. Now, how are we going to do that and how much clean water are we going to get it? Well, we're going to leave that out. We're not going to tell you about that. So in reality, if going back to my charity example, if I'm saying give me money and I'll give them, you know, fresh water in this village, fresh water, that could have a million different things. Okay, I could say that I just send them like a shitty straw for a dollar that has a filter through it. I could just easily go to Costco and buy some water and ship it to them there. I could just send them some filters and be like, here you go, filter. You know, that's the thing. And that's the problem with these charities is they don't give you the details. Now, here's why. Because if they give you the details of how they're going to, you know, get in this example, the fresh water to these people, well, the more details you give, the more idea of a financial scope we can get. All right, so like if I'm saying in my example that I'm gonna go and out and buy water filter systems, electric water filters that they can plug in and use, you people will, will put it together. Well, these electric water filters will probably cost this much money, so this is how much of the money that Nick is using, and we know when, here's a spreadsheet, bada boom, bada bing, right? But a lot of charities, they don't really tell you that. So in this example, they didn't really say what uh, they were doing with the money. I guess a good analogy for this would be like the guy who scammed everybody in the, I think it was in the 90s, and he said that you could buy an engraved uh, President Lincoln copper cylinder, right? <clears throat> so all these people bought it. He was shipping them pennies. Because in reality, that's true. That's true. A penny is a copper-plated stamp of President Lincoln. Big lawsuit. I think he went to jail or got arrested or something. But charities can do that. They will be like, yes, we're going to give fresh water. But how? We're not going to tell you that. So going back to our profit, yes, they do make a profit. Okay. Now, where does that money go? Well, if you really look into it, it goes back into the charity. You know, it could be as easy as like we upgrade the computers that we use. Now we're all using MacBooks. We have new office furniture. We buy office snacks. Uh, everybody needs more money. You know, we give out raises and bonuses and things like that. And that's what this company was doing is literally they were doing the bare minimum the charity part and then just using the money to find loopholes to reinvest in themselves so you literally were paying these people who ran this nonprofit nothing they were using the money on themselves and they did find out that they did technically say because when they went to court about it they're like no no we do send fresh water and guess what the company had collected uh, through donations, I think in a year, a couple of million dollars. Now, how much of that couple of million dollars were they using to help these poor kids who needed clean water? 150 bucks. They would just go out and buy $150 worth of bottled water and just ship it over there and then say, boom, see, our charity is using the money to get fresh water to these kids. And then they would use the rest of the millions and millions of dollars to, you know, buy fancy things, invest, hold fancy dinners and benefits. I think dinners and benefits are really fucking stupid. Like all the money you'll waste on like, you know, dinners and benefits for charities. Why do you need those? Just use that money <clears throat> to buy extra things for the people who actually need it that your charity says that it's actually helping, okay? So that's my rant for today. Got a little heartfelt there, but I do believe that. Like if you're gonna do a charity, because I've done charities before, right? Is make sure 
that the charity is actually doing what they've said they're going to do. Okay, that they're being charitable. I think that's the correct term. Versus just focusing on growing the charity and reinvesting in themselves. Because that's where a lot of charities fail, is they focus too much on reinvesting versus actually being charitable to the one thing that they said is their cause. So that's my rant on that. But it makes a lot of sense, right? When you really, really think about it, it makes a lot of sense. So the next time that you're out at the grocery store and they say, would you like to donate a dollar to the Helping Kids of America America Fund? You should be like, well, what does this dollar go towards? How much of this dollar that I'm giving you actually goes towards helping these kids? What kind of kids are we helping? Are they sick kids? Do they need food? Do they need water? Do they need shoes? Do they need whatever? Okay, details, 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 details. So I guess the extra lesson in today's episode is that if you're going to start a charity, you better have a lot of details, okay? Be very detailed and specific on where the money is going, who's getting it, how much, bada boom, bada bing, bada bing, okay? Because I guarantee the more detailed and honest you are, the more donations that you will get, okay? Now, my examples work too. So if you go into a, you know, a coffee shop this week and they say that you know uh, a part of the money goes to taking down a warlord, let me know about that because I will definitely buy coffee. Um, I will buy coffee from them. That would that would be that would be amazing. Yeah, nimble urban survivor today. Yeah, we really got heartfelt about charities. We could win an Emmy for this episode. Actually, this could just be, this is like an Illuminati thing, right? Wouldn't it be great if I just found out that I just like opened the floodgates and all of these like fraudulent charities in America and then my show mysteriously gets canceled next week because I mysteriously take a trip to Aruba and then mysteriously you guys never hear from me again? Uh, well, if that is the case, please, please try and, and locate me somehow because because i'd like to keep this show going you know i don't want the show to get taken down by i guess charity warlords is that what i'd call them i think i would call them charity warlords right right side i don't know i don't know okay guys that's our time for today thank you so much for listening to the nimble urban survivor again i'm your host nick Catelli. hope you uh, are having a good week good day good year good something i don't know be happy summer is right around the corner and it's gonna be amazing i just got my first vaccine shot yesterday and i'm feeling somewhat awesome COVID is on its way out. America's going to get back to it. And guys, it's going to be amazing. So again, if you ever have a topic or something that you want to talk about on the show, or if you ever want to be on the Nimble Urban Survivor, feel free to contact me via my website at www.catellicomedy.com. So guys, have a good one. Stay safe out there. I will talk to you guys later. And remember, survive out there and get a cup of cha-cha's coffee.